Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. This series of videos is going to be perfect for my first time painters. And my first time painters are those of you that have never painted before or this is your first time painting at home. Um, this is going to be my Monet series. There's three videos in this series and I recommend trying each one of them. And again, it's just gonna get you comfortable with mixing your paint and applying your paint to the canvas. So in this video and all the videos on my channel, in the description box below, there is a link to a supply kit. And those are all the supplies that you need for this particular video. And that link down there to where you can purchase your own, um, you can purchase them from Amazon or an art store. If you want a kit shipped to you, I do offer that as well. And that's gonna be a link below in the description box. Um, you'll pick your project from there and you can pick this video and all your supplies, canvas, paints, brushes, uh, traceable, everything is mailed directly to you. So check out those links below for your supplies. So like I said earlier, this video is for first time painters. And as you get more comfortable with the painting process, I want you guys to go to my main online school, paintwithlovejoy.com and check out my Paint Your Pet class. After you get a little bit more comfortable, my Paint Your Pet class is geared towards first time and beginner painters, and you're gonna learn about your value scale, and it's a core foundational art skill that you could apply to anything creative in the future. So as you're getting creative, just take it one step at a time and just have fun with the process. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, anything, please feel free to email me. Um, or reach out on the Facebook group or leave a comment on this video and I try to respond to all the social media um, outlets in the morning and evening of every day. So I do my best to get back to your comments as quickly as possible. So enough talking, let's jump right into painting and start having some fun. <laughs> All right, guys, this is going to be another fun painting. Go ahead and grab all your supplies, all your colors. Make sure you turn on your favorite music. And as always, make sure you take your progress photos. So for today's painting, we're doing Monet's, a version of Monet's Water Lilies. And we're going to do kind of an abstract background in the beginning. And we're going to start with a light blue. So we're going to take white plus blue and making it very, very light. You can see on the screen. Your color might be a little darker than mine, that's okay. And I want you to try three brush strokes. Kind of try that full width or making X marks. Um, and kind of try both of them as we fill in our space on our background and whichever brush stroke you find a little more comfortable, stick with that one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep taking this light blue and kind of fill in a space on our canvas. And I want you to do your best job just to kind of mimic the places where I put this color. And if your color happens to be a different color than mine, darker or lighter, do not stress out about it. If you're one of my first time painters, take a deep breath for me right now. You may be holding your breath without realizing it. And here you can see I added a little bit more blue to my mixture and kind of putting it underneath where we have the lighter blue. And you can see where I'm actually overlapping my first light color with the darker color that I'm putting on there. And this is what we call wet on wet blending. And this gets more comfortable the more that you paint. So feel free to just kind of play with this. You're gonna do this in pretty much every painting that you do from here on out. Um, so you're just building more muscle memory, more comfort level with your tools and with mixing paint. to where we have it a little bit darker at the bottom and a little bit lighter at the top of the canvas. So here, grabbing a little bit more of my darker blue for making that bottom right-hand corner just a little bit darker. We are gonna be putting layers on top of this. All right, so you can see where I grabbed some of that straight blue and just kind of slapped it on top of my medium blue. And you can see as I move my brush back and forth, it blends together. This is again that wet on wet blending method. And we're gonna be putting these in a few random spots kind of at the top. These are gonna be the shadows that are gonna be underneath some of our water lilies or underneath some of our foliage on the water. 
And again, using light pressure, just going over the top to kind of mix a little bit of the darker blue in with that lighter, super, super light blue. Again, if yours is a little bit different than what mine looks like, that's okay. This is your version of the painting. And I tell all my students at home or in my class that just the fact that you show up and you're going through the process, this makes you successful already. All right, so here we're just going to be doing kind of some abstract little designs in here. Again, these are going to be water lilies on top of water. So our water's moving and going in different directions. And we're just kind of laying that base down right now. Again, grabbing a bit more of that darker blue. If you're using student grade paint, you can apply it a little bit thicker and you'll have a bit more opaque coverage. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna go in with some white, doing the same thing, slapping a little bit of white in a few areas that I want lighter on my background. And my paint is still very wet. I'm doing this kind of quickly, so I don't want you letting your paint dry in between these steps. You do want your paint wet, so you can get some of these fun little designs, um, be able to do a little bit of your blending. Again, take a deep breath. You may not realize it, but you're holding your breath. Relax, laugh at yourself a little bit. Like I said, you're doing a great job. So another spot to take a progress photo. You're gonna clean your brush really good and we're gonna make a light green mixture. So I started with white, added the green in there. Gets to be a bit of a spearminty color. Then we're gonna add a touch of yellow and that warms it up to make it a bit more of slightly spring green. And you are welcome to make your lily pad color any color you want. And we're just gonna be making kind of ovals or ellipses, kind of long stretched out where we're placing our lily pads. And we are copying a Monet painting but if you want to add a lily pad somewhere where I do not place it, feel free to go ahead and make it your own painting. And these don't have to be perfectly the same size or the same shape. You're thinking that our lily pads are moving a little bit on the water. So some may be longer, some may be a little thicker. And I do want you to notice as you do this, you're using the same shade or generally the same shade, but I want you to look and see how it looks a little bit different on the darker blue compared to the lighter blue that we'll be putting it on. And you get to witness a little bit of color theory by seeing that. So as we go to the top, the same shade looks a little bit different compared to this shade on the darker blue. And if you wanna do a little more research on your own, it's called color theory. We interpret our color based on the color right next to it. Again, adding some of those last few little lily pads in there. Now I've moved down to the small pointy brush using straight green paint. We're gonna be putting a little bit of a shadow on the bottom and a little bit on the left of each of our lily pads. This is helping us create depth and give us that illusion of space on this flat surface. And again, this does not have to be perfect. Just mimic as closely as you can what you see where I'm placing these on the video or on my canvas. And a few of our lilies may be a little bit darker, so I'm gonna add a few more underneath. And when we get to the point to pause the video, feel free to pause it or at any point during the video, pause it and stop and just observe. And that's really what art is about, is observing things that you see in your environment, in your world, and how do you see them? And the more that you observe them, the more details you will see. So I tell all my students in class that art's not about being perfect, but it's about learning to look at your environment and your world from a slightly new perspective. All right, another spot to pause the video and take your progress photo. 
All right, so now we're cleaning our brush, going back to blue paint, and we're gonna go underneath each lily pad and kind of, again, underneath and a little on the left side, we're creating a shadow for where the lily pad is sitting on top of the water. There would be a very sharp, uh, not sharp, but kind of dark shadow. Again, giving the illusion that we have this lily pad floating and resting on top of the water. Now, as we go through this process, and especially true of many, many Impressionist paintings, these paintings are meant to be viewed from about 10 to 20 feet away. And they look entirely different from that distance compared to two feet in front of you while you're painting. So as we continue to go through this process, get in the habit of getting out of your chair, walking about three to five feet away, and assessing what your painting looks like from that distance. When you take your picture with your cell phone and look at it on your screen, it's the same thing as looking at your painting from 20 feet away without getting out of your chair. So feel free to utilize that aspect as well. All right, so now we're gonna move into the little lotus flowers, making a light pink. Clean your brush really good, and we're gonna use white with a touch of red. And with each uh, lotus flower that we put on here, if you think about it, that we're, you're gonna make a V and then put a few little lines inside that V. It kind of helps as you think about making your lotus flower. You're making a V with a few other um, lines inside the V. And you can make your lily or your lotus flowers a few different sizes. They don't all have to be the same size. We will be going in with some more details with the red paint in our next step. And again, if you would prefer to have light purple uh, lotus flowers, feel free to do that. And here you can see I grabbed some of that straight red. There we go, Clean it, angling the brush a little bit. There we go. And kind of putting some of this straight red in the center of our lotus flower. Again, just giving the illusion of depth better seen from farther away. If you need to go back to some of your blue, put a few extra shadows in, go ahead and do that. Now I'm taking some of that straight white and just in a few little spots on our lotus flower, kind of in the center, putting a few little spots of white again for a highlight value on our lotus flowers. Still taking that white and going on the opposite side on our lily pads on the top and the right side. Again, just giving a little hint of white there and giving a bit of a highlight. So go ahead, pause your video, take a progress photo. And at this point, you do wanna let your paint fully dry. We're gonna be putting the vines that are hanging from the top of the painting on, and it does help to make sure your background's dry. And I moved back to that middle small brush, or that medium flat brush, and did a mixture of blue and green. And starting at the top, holding the brush kind of sideways and just making these little squiggles, these little snake lines going down. Again, just do your best to mimic what you see on the screen. We are overlapping a few of those lines with each other, and we're gonna repeat this process on the left hand side of the canvas. As you're doing this, mind the pressure of your brush. The harder you push your brush against the canvas, the wider the line it's gonna make. So again, you're practicing your brush control and pressure here. Some of these will overlap the lily pads. That's okay, because again, Monet was painting his ponds and his flower gardens most of his life, and quite a bit of plain air stuff for wherever he was traveling. All right, and you're gonna wipe off your brush and we're gonna go more to just that straight green, doing the exact same thing and overlapping some of the first colors that we did. Um, we're gonna do this with one other color for a highlight value. Again, we're creating the foliage that Monet was painting. 
If you need to move down to that small pointy brush to make some smaller lines, go right ahead and do that. Now we're doing a mixture of yellow and green, doing the exact same thing, but this is giving us kind of our highlight value, a light value. And I am doing this while the paint is wet, so if you're doing that as well, and some of your colors kind of mix together, don't freak out about it. That's just part of the process. All you're doing is getting comfortable with your tools, comfortable with mixing paint, and comfortable with the process of painting. All right, you're doing a great job. I'm really proud of you for painting. Hopefully you are a little more relaxed now than at the beginning of the painting. And I encourage all my students to find creative outlets for themselves on a monthly basis. All right, you guys, great job. Thanks so much for painting with me. I hope you enjoyed the process, and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of paintings and I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you are very proud of yourself. I am proud of you for going along the process, for conquering something that was kind of scary and realizing hopefully that it's not as hard as you thought. So please try to find a creative outlet for yourself on a monthly basis. Um, you just get better and better with more practice. And as you're uploading your pictures and videos to social media, please tag me at paint with lovejoy or hashtag paint with lovejoy. Um, and if nothing else, please email me your pictures of what you paint, paint with lovejoy at gmail.com. Um, it truly makes my day every time I receive those emails and it gives me motivation to continue to make these videos for you. So let me know how you're doing at home. When again, when you're ready to kind of paint your pet and take it to your next level, check out my online school for paint your pet, paintwithlovejoy.com. And any comments, questions, concerns, leave a comment, send me an email. Like I said, let me know how you're doing. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I'm honored. I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. And like always, subscribe and wait for that series of video videos are for you. Let's do that again. Ah. Gonna wait for the plane.